Hey, my name is Tyler, aka The Marketing Bully, and today I'm going to walk you through how to use Canva to design freebies. So the first thing I'm doing is actually writing out all my content in a Google Doc because that's the first step. It is very hard to design um, anything and write the content for it at the same time, so I always recommend doing these in two separate steps. Now, everything that I'm putting in this Google Doc will be getting turned into the actual freebie that I'm going to design with you, and then you'll be able to scroll scroll down in the description box and actually download it so that you can get all the content because I do fast forward through me actually taking the time to write it. So all I'm doing right now is creating my table of contents for my freebie and then just labeling it as that and i'm going to go through and actually write out all of my content if you want to see a separate video about what how i actually write the content for my freebies drop a comment down and let me know below now i'm just going to go through and actually create my special offer for my freebie and I always include a special offer to go with my freebies. Um, I like to include these special offers so that um, my freebies actually lead back to something that people can download and pay for. Um, the point of the freebies is to generate leads. And so what I'm going to be promoting is my four-week uh, newsletter training that I just completed. Um, it was a live class and I'm selling all the curriculum and the videos. Um, if you want access to it, you can get access to it in the freebie when you download it or in the description box down below as well. Um, with this workshop, you'll actually learn how to use the freebie that we're making together right now inside of a email funnel. I'm just making sure that everything is done and up to date and then I'm going to move to the next step. Now, the next step is to actually go to Canva and choose what size you want. In the freebie, I explained that um, if you're doing a text heavy freebie, then you want to choose an ebook format. But if you're doing something that's not super text heavy like mine, where the text is more short and simple and to the point, then you can use the Twitter post format. Now, you can scroll through and look at all of the different formats that they have. which is what I'm doing right now. But ultimately, I typically choose more simple and minimalistic designs uh, or templates for my freebies. You can design them 100% from scratch, but I do find it to be faster to find something that's already been created and then you take it and make it your own. Now, I chose this one um, because it's more in line with how my branding and brand design already is. And so I'm going to go ahead and lay out and set up the very first page. Now, on this first page, um, I'll, also, before I even start designing anything, I'm going to try to upload all the elements that I need, like my logos and a headshot that I want to use. So I'm going to lay out and design the very first page. I'm going to be copying and pasting over a lot of my content from my Google Doc. And then once I get done with that um, first page, I'm going to go ahead and start lining out and laying out my following pages. Once I get done designing this first page, I do set up the introduction page. Um, but something to keep in mind too when you're doing your cover, always include a bright, bold header, your logo, your company's website, um, and make sure that the links that you put on here are actually clickable. Now I'm going to set up my introductory page, and this is going to introduce my readers to the freebie as well as to who I am and why I believe that this content is valuable for them. Again, I always include my logo. And a lot of the time I will include social media icons as well as my social media handles. I'm just not during this one. So the way that I set this page up is how all of my pages are going to be set up for the most part throughout this freebie. Um, I actually explain why, but in, in the actual freebie. But the main thing to keep in mind is that you want there to be a theme of consistency inside of your freebie in terms of like font placement, font sizes, and header sizes. And in order for there to be consistency, the easiest thing for you to do is to lay everything out before you actually start designing. 
So for the most part, my images are going to be on the right side. My text is going to be on the left. My headers are going to be centered. And as I'm going through, I'm going to pick the sizes that I want everything to be, um, as well as how I want it to stretch across the page. And I'm going to make sure that it's cohesive so that all slides, for the most part, have the exact same layout for the fonts. Now I'm just going to go through and create all the template pages from my Google Docs and you'll see me going back and forth and copying and pasting uh, quite a bit right here. And so there are seven steps total. So I have to set up seven slides and then set up the call to action slide as well. The only thing I'm doing here is just pressing the um, duplicate button right above the slide and copy and paste it in all of the content. I'm also shortening things that feel repetitive so that it all fits onto one line. I want all of my headers to fit onto one line again to go with that theme of cohesiveness and also to try and minimize having to have too many extra slides. Um, inside of this freebie. You don't want your freebies to feel overwhelming. You don't want them to feel overloaded with content. Um, and so in order to have something that's concise, it's okay to go back and delete some of the things that you originally put in. All right, I'm almost done doing this. And so once I finish actually copy and pasting over this content for the headers, I'm going to go ahead and start copy and pasting over the body text. I'm also going to resize the body text when I start doing this so that everything in the body text um, is the same size on all pages. So first I start with uploading my headshot. And then uploading the content from the introduction section. How this section lines up is going to determine what size the body is going to be. So because this is too big at 31, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and go down to 18. Now I'm able to uh, better understand what the font sizes are going to be for all the pages, which is going to be a size 18 font. But I'm also going to make sure I have space to add in my button to go along with the call to action I added at the bottom. Um, I always make sure that I'm using my brand colors. If you haven't set up your brand kit in Canva, I highly recommend doing that so that you're not guessing if a color is right for you, um, if it's right for your branding. Now I'm just going to create the text that's going to go over my button. When I'm doing this, I hyperlink the actual button and not just the text that is on the button. If you group them together first, like I did, you will not be able to add a link. You will have to ungroup them, click the button, click the three dots, and then click link and paste in. That is the only way you'll be able to do it. And then go back and group them together when you're done. This ensures that the entire button is clickable and not just the text that's in the middle of the button. As crazy as that sounds, but it really does matter about the small details here. Once I finish that first page, I'll be able to go through and do the exact same thing to all other pages that are available. Go ahead and start setting them up. Um, put my font down to a size 18. And then just start copying and pasting in all of the content that I've already written. In the uh, freebie, I do mention that you can use ChatGPT to help you with writing the content of your freebie. You 100% can. I just want to caution you that you need to always go back and edit it. Don't ever take what an AI tool um, generates for you and just use that. Always make sure you go back and edit it. Now, when there's some extra space, I do like to add in um, some line spacing to make content easier to read. You can also add in bullet points if you'd like to. I just didn't feel that it was necessary this time. Because I want it to stand out that there are steps, I'm going to make it bold where it says steps one through seven um, so that it's easy to identify where one step ends and another step begins. Pay attention to how my logo and website still is in the bottom left corner. Now we're going to copy and paste in the content for slide number one. Um, we've already readjusted the font size for this one, but I'm just going through and doing any spell checking um, as well as going through and skipping down um, the 
the sentences to break up any big blocks of text. You don't really want big blocks of text when you're doing anything digital. Um, it can be hard to read and process. And so you want to try and make it to where there's only one or two sentences uh, per line for the most part so that the content is actually digestible, especially on mobile devices. So now all I'm doing is just going through it and adding in any additional text that I want and taking out any unnecessary wording that I do not. Once I finish this entire process of copying and pasting my content in and adjusting it to my liking, I'm going to set up the call to action page at the end. And then I am going to download this as a PDF and just test all of my links. Inside of the freebie, I do explain different download options like Canva does have the option for you to create a presentation link and they also have the option for you to create a flip book. I also explain in this freebie um, which one would be most beneficial to you. So if you just want a freebie where people can just click um, your buttons or your links and be able to read the content all in one cohesive document, then you just want to do a simple PDF. If you want to create a presentation where there are animations as well as voiceovers and videos involved, then you want to do the presentation link so that it actually plays in them for Canva. If you want there to be a PDF where the pages flip automatically and there's a flipping animation and noise to go with it to give them more of a physical book feeling, then you want to do the flip book presentation. Um, if you want to see a video about how, how to do each of these different things, like as far as exporting your document, let me know down in the comments and I'm happy to show you um, how it works. Um, what you're seeing visually is me just creating a, an additional slide to go along with step number three because the content ran over just a little bit, but none of my other slides did this. If you do run out of space on a slide, don't start shrinking the text and trying to squeeze in as much as possible. White space is your friend. It's okay to create a, an additional page sometimes, but every single slide should not need an additional page. That's my only slide that did. So I'm about happy halfway done now with copy and pasting in and formatting the content that I want to go in here. Um, once I finalize this and finalize the content for the call to action page, I do go through and decide what kind of imagery I want to use. Now, um, oftentimes I will find ways to repurpose content that I already have. So I'll go through and figure out where I want to place in my blog post and my YouTube videos, my podcast, my Twitter threads and stuff. But just for the sake of simplicity on this freebie, I am just using regular elements in the place of those things to go inside of this freebie. Um, if I wanted to make it more advanced, I would definitely take those extra steps. Um, on step seven is where I go over all the things that I told you about exporting everything. Um, so again, if you want all of these details written out for you and you actually want to see uh, the contents of how to design something in Canva as far as a freebie goes, scroll down to the description box and you can go download it 100% for free. Now, I didn't like the original format that I had chose for the call to action page, so I just duplicated a page that I do like, and I'm just copy and pasting in my call to action. I do plan to reformat this um, to better fit um, the content and the call to action plus the image that I actually plan on using. Now, the, again, this is promoting my course. So I do want to put the image that actually is from my course. Um, it's rectangle. So I'm just going to delete the square frame that I initially added. I'm going to line up my text for how I want it to be and shrink down the font to the size that it needs to be. Um, in the image that I uploaded, it already has a different version of my logo in it. So I don't need my logo on this slide twice. So it's okay to delete it. It's still going to be branded properly. Um, and now I'm just making sure that my image fits into this space. 
And now that this is good to go, and I know that my button is linked, now I can go through to the Canva elements and search for things that look for like what's on the contents of the page. Again, when you're choosing the elements that are on your pages, make sure that all of your designs um, are cohesive and look alike. Um, and are and they have the appropriate brand colors. My brand colors are very neutral brown earth tone. Um, I love mustard yellow and colors just in that range. And so all of my elements are going to have that color. I'm deleting the image frames off of here, by the way, because Canva doesn't um, allow you to put graphic elements into the image frames, only photographs. And so I just use those as placeholders so that I can be reminded of where a graphic or an image will go but if I decide to use a graphic design element then I don't need that frame there anymore so now I'm almost done pasting uh, pasting in my elements from the elements tab on Canva and I'm just literally searching for things that are relevant to what the header is on the page that I'm working on so for proofreading I chose the, the magnifying glass and then for writing I'm going to choose um, a graphic that looks like someone is writing um, and then just make sure I'm changing the colors to match my brand colors now that I'm done I'm going to export it. This first time I exported it as a PNG. When you do that, it downloads everything as 12 separate slides or however many slides are in here. It'll do it as a zip file. And so once it did that, I confirmed I had all the images and then I went back to Canva and now I'm going to download it all as a PDF. Um, and once that is done, I just go through and test my buttons to make sure they work. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like it and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be dropping more um, marketing tutorials like this to teach you how to do things from start to finish for your business because it's not as hard as you think. All right. Bye. See you next time.